Hi everyone, it's so good to have everyone with me tonight. We're gonna try something a little bit new. My name is Heather Parrish. And I am uh, one of the directors at Lotus and Ivy, and I am here to uh, read you all a story this evening. Um, I would like to uh, let you all know that I'm coming to you live from Alabama, and it would be so great if you would leave where you are coming to me from uh, in the comments so I can see uh, where everyone is from. All right, we are going to go ahead and get started with our story time. So today our story is called Creepy Carrots. Creepy Carrots. This story, the words are written by Aaron Reynolds, he's the author, and the illustrator is Peter Brown. Jasper Rabbit had a passion for carrots, and the carrots that grew in Krakenhopper Field were the best, fat, crisp, and free for the taking. He pulled some for a morning snack on the way to school. He yanked a few on his way to the Little League practice. He ripped them from the ground on his way home at night. Jasper couldn't get enough carrots. Until they started following him. He first noticed something strange after the big game against the East Valley Hares. Jasper was about to help himself to a victory snack when he heard the soft, sinister tump, tump, tump of carrots creeping. He turned, but there was nothing there but just my imagination, he thought, but he hopped a little faster. That night, as he was brushing his teeth, there they were. Do you see them? Jasper whipped around, but nothing. He laughed to himself, picked his toothbrush up off of the floor and went to bed quickly. The next morning, he approached Krakenhopper Field slowly. He reached for two wild carrots. Nothing happened. He bit into one. Nothing happened. Whew, creepy carrots. It was ridiculous. But when he arrived home that evening, Mom, Mom, Jasper screamed, creepy carrots in the shed. His mom opened the door. Slowly, there weren't any carrots, not even the regular kind. Later that night, as Jasper lay in bed, he heard it through the terrible fire TV behind him. And there on his wall, <gasps> creepy carrots, he shouted. Dad, dad. His dad bumped into his bedroom and threw on the light. They searched under the bed. 
no creepy carrots. They looked through the closet, no creepy carrots. They opened the dresser drawers, no creepy carrots. Just a bad dream, son, his dad said, shaking his head. Now go to sleep. That was not going to happen. By the end of the week, Jasper was seeing creepy carrots creeping everywhere. Do you see them? Jasper knew his parents were wrong. Creepy carrots were real and they were coming for him, but they couldn't get him if they couldn't get out. Ooh, he's thinking about doing something sneaky. Jasper hatched a plan First thing on Saturday, he grabbed supplies and headed to Cratton Hopper Field. And he's measured out his space here. He's sawing some wood. He's digging a trench. He's doing some watering. He's doing some hammering. As the sun finally set across Krakenhopper Field, Jasper Rabbit smiled. <laughs> On his way home, there was no tonk, tonk, tonk. There were no carrot-shaped shadows. His plan had worked. No creepy carrots could ever get out of that carrot patch again. Wow, what a plan. Built the fence all the way around the carrot patch. Hmm. And as the sun finally set, the carrots of Krakenhopper Field. You see the carrot peeking out between the boards in the corn? Hmm. I wonder what the Carrots cheered. Their creepy plan had worked. They were sure of it. Jasper Rabbit would never get into that carrot patch ever again. So it wasn't Jasper who was being sneaky. It was the carrots. The end. Thank you guys so much for joining me for story oh, that's time creepy. today. I need to fix that. So I have just a couple of announcements. I will be sending out a um, story extension page for ages kindergarten through fifth grade uh, that if you have older children, these would be perfect activities for them to do with the younger children. Uh, so I'll be sending that out just when I get off here so you all will have that so you can do your activities. If there's anyone joining us who is outside of the Lotus and Ivy family, please feel free to message us and we will be happy to send that extension to you. No problem, don't worry, we're not gonna sell your email or uh, give it away to anyone, we would never do that. Um, for our families who are enrolled in Lotus and Ivy, I just wanted to make a quick announcement that session two compliments begin uh, on November the 3rd. For class one, two, that will be Spanish. For class three, four, it's German. Class five, six, it's recorder. And class seven, eight, you guys will be in handwork. If your child is not registered for any of those classes, but they are interested, please shoot us an email. We'll be happy to let you know if we have space in any of those classes. And we would love to go ahead and get them signed up so that they can start next Wednesday. Our next all program event is on Martinmas, which will be um, happening on November the 9th at uh, 4 p.m. Pacific time, 7 p.m. Right. Eastern time, uh, just like this event was this evening. Um, and we will be uh, baking pre 
pretzels that evening as well as making uh, lanterns for our lantern walk that we'll be taking after our uh, Martinmas celebration. And our final announcement is that our next story time will be on Thursday, December 16th at 4 p.m. Uh, Pacific time, 7 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, thank you all again for joining me. It was great to see you all. I'm gonna show you the story one more time. You may have this one or you may see it at the library if you wanna read it again. It's called Creepy Carrots by Aaron Reynolds and the pictures are by Peter Brown. So great to uh, see everyone. I uh, hope to see you back here in December when we're doing this again. All right, bye-bye.